everybody. We are taking advantage of the super warm weather and we're gonna take Rascal on a little bit of a walk. So we wanted you all to partake in it. This is her first time back outside this year, 70 degrees in Chicago. So we've had a very, very cold winter, but she loves being out here, right? <gasps> you feel it, Bree? <laughs> She's so excited. What do you think? Feels good out here, huh? Wanna go to the park? Woo! What do you think? Okay, so Rascal is harness trained. We worked on it with her um, before summer came around last year. So she is used to being in the harness. Um, she is fully flighted. Her wings are not clipped. Um, and for anybody that's spoken to us about our opinions on wing trims and going outside with your bird. Um, we support either um, route, whether or not you clip your birds or leave them fully flighted. Um, our belief is that whether or not your bird is fully flighted or clipped, responsibly they should never be outside unless they're in a true avian harness of, of some sort or in a um, carrier. Woo! going does that feel good you love the sunshine yeah so unless they're in a carrier in a harness even if their wings are trimmed um, we strongly recommend um, that you don't take them outside um, that said if you can get them in a harness or if you have a more open um, carrier that you can use for your bird the sunshine is so good for them um, it does wonders for their feather quality I mean, you can see it's so, so good. Um, but it's good for their mental health as well. I mean, the outdoors can be really, really stimulating. Um, she loves having tons of stuff to look at and she loves um, looking at the trees and the squirrels and stuff like that. So she really does love it, right? What do you think? We have a bunch of uh, apartment buildings that right around our store. And so sometimes if people are sitting out on our balcony, we'll come out here and she'll like say hello to the, the people that live around. But it's really fun, you love it. What do you think? She gets so excited when birds fly over the head, over her head too, right? It's fun. <laughs> wow, pretty girl. Good girl. <laughs> Stacy loves it out here, right? It's fun. What do you think, Rasko? Are we having fun? That breeze feels so good. Yeah, so we've been cooped up all winter. She's absolutely <laughs> loving being out here. So in normal circumstances, when kids are allowed to play at the park, um, all last year we would take her to the park and she'd generate this little crowd of people around her. Um, so she's a great bird because she's very interactive and she loves to talk and um, communicate. Um, she's a great bird to take to places like parks and everybody's out walking their dogs. Not everybody gets to see a, a macaw <laughs> and a leash every, all the time. So it's pretty fun. Ah! Whoa! What do you think? I know this is so fun. Step up. Yes, good girl. Good girl. What do you think? Wow. Yeah. What do you think, baby? <laughs> She's already getting winded. That's not a good thing. She needs more exercise. Right? We gotta work those muscles. Gotta build that endurance, girl. Yes, we do. So for those of you that um, maybe have clipped it, where we're gonna go this way. Um, if your bird is clipped or even if you don't really have an opportunity to um, harness train, although I, I'm a big believer that with enough motivation, you can get any bird in a harness. You just have to really be patient with it and know what you're doing and have to kind of work to avoid stressing your bird. Um, but that said, um, if you can't get them in a harness, it is still a good idea to try to build some of, of their endurance and some of their flight strength. Um, so if you can get them, um, even in the house, 
You can raise them up and down and force them to flap their wings. Um, it does really help build up some strength, right? <laughs> yeah, so this is our little park that's right next door to our, uh, we'll wait for this car to pass. Oh, they're gonna let us go. Um, this is the park that we have next door. You can see everything's taped off, but that's okay. Someday we'll be able to come back out here with all the kids. Um, so yeah, as far as harness training goes, um, I'll talk about it briefly. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, at the store, we do sell the aviator harness. Um, it is my personal favorite harness, um, but I think there's a lot of really good ones out there. It just kind of depends on the style you like and what you really know will keep your bird secure. Um, but the aviator harnesses are nice because they're truly designed for the shape of their body. And it's very easy to then make sure you're getting the appropriate size harness for your bird. So you always want to follow the guide very closely to make sure um, that you're putting them in the right size. You don't want it to be lo too loose and you don't want it to be too tight around their neck. Um, that said, some of the tricks to being successful with a harness is before you even introduce them, when you are putting the harness over their head, it's gonna momentarily blind them. So if a bird is not used to having your hands cupped over their eyes to temporarily blind them, um, that sensation of the harness going over their head is gonna feel very, very intimidating. So if you can sit here with your hand over their eyes and they don't freak out, that's a really, really good starting point. Even Rascal can be sometimes still a little temperamental about me extending her wing. Uh. <laughs> she just got commentary. Um, now I'm not a big fan of scratching them under the wing too terribly much. It can be a little overly stimulating. That's different than desensitization to touch. So she's used to me um, extending her wing and moving it at the shoulder, which is also another motion that you need to do. The other tricky part is you have to be able to then go underneath them um, to, in order to tighten it. Well, for most birds, um, like at the store, we train them to step up forward. So then when we're fussing underneath them, they have this sensation to continually step forward and it can frustrate them that we're trying to be reach under them, but we don't really want them to step up. Um, so I always try to keep her or situated on my knee and she knows that she's supposed to stay put there and I'm not gonna ask her to step up while I'm doing the harness. So <laughs> I know, <laughs> she's like, can you keep walking mom? Um, so yeah, so there's a, a lot of techniques that go into it. The Aviator Harness has like a wonderful DVD that comes with it um, to kind of go over and walk you through exactly how to introduce it in the least intimidating way possible. Um, but it is a really great way to get them outside. But like I said, um, now that it's finally warm out here in Chicago, um, we are going to be taking Rascal on a lot more walks and I am working on harness training some of the other species that we're gonna have at the school time. Whoa, he, he has a big gust of wind. <laughs> she doesn't know what to think. She's having so much fun. Um, so yeah, we'll keep you guys in the loop as we do our um, outdoor adventures. We'll try to get you guys involved and um, maybe once in a while we'll do a live feed so you guys can ask questions while we're out here. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. So thanks for watching everybody.